So hi everyone. Uh, okay, today we'll finish the final main topic of this class, and then for the rest of the next week and a half, I will uh, give a quick introduction or important topic I skipped, but that since it's just going to be a quick introduction, it's not going to be in the exam. Um, so where were we? So what was left was we just stated the following theorem. So remember, sorry, we had psi some map from B to BO, and then we defined a map from the uh, nth boardism group with size structure to the nth homotopy group of m psi. And this um, phi to the composite, oh, sorry. That's the fundamental class of our manifold, and that's the map induced by phi on Tom spectra, which I guess I didn't give it a name, but I'm called phi anyway. And psi is an isomorphism. So this essentially reduces the computation of Bordism groups to the computation of uh, of some homotopy groups of a spectrum. And this is actually how Bordism groups are typically computed by computing these homotopy groups. And let me state a corollary from these. Uh, so let's say X a space, then the Muxi homology is just the Bordism group of closed N manifolds with Xi structure equipped with a map to X. So this gives a complete description of Mxi homology in terms of manifolds. And the proof I said last time, but let me repeat it, is just the right hand side is just omega n psi x, where psi x from b times x to b to b o is this composite here. But n psi x is n psi tensor sigma infinity plus x. Oh, sorry. I am trying to put the plus there. And that's just because, you know, <clears throat> uh, it's a co-limit of this thing, but I can essentially uh, take first the co-limit here and then here. And uh, well, the point is uh, that it's constant in X, this co-limit. So I'm just doing tensoring. I'm just tensoring by sigma infinity X plus. Okay. Questions so far? No. So let's prove the theorem. So this is a map of abelian groups. And we want to say it's an isomorphism. Uh, we will show that it is injective and surjective. For doing so, we will need a couple of results in differential topology and the notes you can find, the references and everything, although I probably have to improve them a little bit. <clears throat> Let's see if I can manage to do it today. So the, the, the first is this theorem, which we actually could almost prove, um, which is the smooth approximation theorem. That says, if f m to n is a continuous 
mat or smooth manifolds. Uh, then F is homotopic to a smooth map. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, but moreover, if A inside of M is a closed subset such that F is smooth in a neighborhood of A, uh, we can choose, sorry, we can choose the homotopy relative to A. So if F was already smooth in a neighborhood of some closed subset A, we can not change F on that closed subset, though not in, on the neighborhood. This is a basic theorem. Essentially, the proof is you embed n into r to the n for some n. Um, you convolve it with some very small bump function so that the image of f still, now f after the convolution is smooth, but the image lives in some tubular neighborhood and then you project it using the projection of a tubular neighborhood. OK, this was a very sketch, very small sketch. And uh, <clears throat> OK. Questions about this theorem? The other theorem is harder, although not much harder, is the transversality theorem. Well, okay, it is harder. It's based on, on a hard result. Uh, the proof I have in mind is simple. That's because we are off-sourcing the hardness to, to a complicated result. So now let f from m to m prime uh, smooth map of smooth manifolds. and n inside of m prime some embedded submanifold uh, do i need closed yeah sorry uh, some compact no, not closed but compact embedded submanifold and just to be clear if m prime and n have boundary uh, which will be the case in, in a step of proof. I'm asking that n is embedded neatly. That is to say that the boundary of n is on the boundary of m prime. Embed. So actually, let me write it neatly embedded. Remember, we define what neatly means. Um, last time, it means that near the points of the boundary is just the embedding of a half hyperplane inside a half space. Then a hyperplane, a half subspace into a half space. Uh, then F is homotopic to a map transverse to M. And as before, moreover, if A inside M is a closed subset such that F is transverse to N in a neighborhood of A, we can choose F, uh, the homotopy relative to A as before. And actually, let me remark 
because this might not be obvious, uh, but certainly F is transverse to N on the points that don't hit N. So in particular, we can choose the homotopy that is constant outside of a neighborhood of N. We can choose the homotopy. It's constant. Neighborhood of N. Well, of F inverse N. Uh, because, uh, well, <laughs> again, where F doesn't intersect N. Uh, in, it is uh, certainly transverse. Okay. So I'm stating the general version of this theorem, but for surjectivity, we will need a simpler version of this theorem, but we will need this full general version for the injectivity part. So, other questions? Um, maybe, do we have this uh, smooth approximation theorem in algebraic geometry as well? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Uh, no, 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 this works up to C infinity. The moment in which you get into analytic maps, uh, all bets are off. Okay. Uh, no, 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 did it. So uh, I'm proving this Pontryagin Tom theorem. And there uh, is a, a version of this theorem in algebraic geometry, but it is much harder and works only in characteristic zero. And it's not quite clear what the statement uh, should be in positive characteristic. It's like literally, uh, there are people working on that like right now in this very moment. Uh, it's much, much harder. Uh, this works uh, uh, for, this works, um, but this Pontryagin Tom theorem, perhaps I should also mention works also for topological manifolds, uh, given the definition properly, but it's a much, much, much harder theorem. That's because the notion of topological transversality is extremely subtle. Um, in fact, it's approachable in dimension different from four. And if I understand correctly, it's also true in dimension four, but the number of people who understand the proof is very, very small. Um, so it, it is a very hard theorem. Um, can you recall again what embedded submanifold was? Oh, so, okay. Uh, submanifold is embedded or neatly embedded, I guess, in the case where they have manifolds, if locally around every point of N, uh, it looks like Well, either r to the k inside r to the n or zero infinity times r to the k minus one inside zero infinity times r to the n minus one, depending whether the point is a boundary point or a so it is x in the interior of n. Of x is in the boundary of n. Okay, but but it's, it, this looks very weird to me. The statement then, because then say f is the identity, and n is some embedded submanifold. Then I have an f, which the f of everywhere has full rank. Uh, yes, the identity is 
such an example. And the identity then, is transverse to every submanifold. And then, ah, it is transversal already. Well, yes, remember the definition. So recall, and maybe I should recall the definition of transversality. F is transverse to N if for every X in N, F of X in N, we have Tx, the image of these plus Tf of X N, uh, sorry, not direct sum, just sum is Tx and prime. It intersects it as small as possible, but of course, if the dimension of M is huge, as small as possible means like it contains it. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, I thought it was a direct sum. No, 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 absolutely uh, not. Absolutely yes, not. now it makes sense. Okay, okay, thank you. Absolutely not. It is a direct sum when, when well, the dimensions are complementary because that's probably the case you, are, you have in mind. Uh, but uh, uh, it's not the... Uh, and note that, for example, if the dimension of TXM uh, is too small, if the dimension of M is too small, it doesn't get, it doesn't have enough uh, tangent space to get this condition. Transverse means simply that the image is disjoint from N. That's another important example. Okay. Are there questions about this? Because now we're going to prove the subjectivity of this map. So for every class in the homotopy group of an xi, we con will construct a manifold. OK, so what we have? We have a map like this. Now, remember, we can write this as follows. First, we can write it like this. Sorry, sigma infinity minus n, tom space of psi n, where psi n from b times b o b o n into b o n. So remember, let me draw perhaps a picture. I have b o inside here. I have b o n sitting, if you want. Uh, with the pathological bundle minus n. And here I can take the pullback. And since BO is the collimitable BON, oh, sorry. I can call this BN. Since BO is the collimit of BO is the collimit of B O N by uh, the cent, if you want. Uh, this follows that B is the collimit of the B Ns. And therefore, the Tom spectra can be realized. As, uh, so the Tom spectra. Sign can be realized as the collimit of the tone spectrum of Xi n. And now the tone spectrum of the Xi n, I can think of it as sort of the disuspension of the tone space of the Xi n. Uh, that's this disuspension, by the way, is just this n here that I am removing to get a topological space. Because you know, if I consider here, I'm taking with, with Tom space of xi n, I literally mean the, the Tom space of 
the pullback of the tautological bundle, which is shifted by n. We need to shift by n to put in degree zero. Okay. So let's suppose we have this map, uh, what did I call it? F. So first of all, by compactness, Oh, the sphere spectrum F factors through some uh, sigma minus n, sigma infinity tau psi n. That is, we get a map sigma n plus k sphere to sigma infinity tau psi n which I'll still call F. We have some object here, which is IE a class in uh, pi M plus K tom psi N, whose image in pi K, uh, tom psi K Sorry, wrong letter. Yeah, I shouldn't use K for this, for N for this, sorry. N was already, uh, well, okay, hopefully you, uh, I'm sorry. N was already occupied by a different, and, Okay, is it clear? So I can lift the, uh, my class F here to some other class that I still call F here in the stable homotopy groups of this point in space. But now, Tom Psi K is a co-limit of S case. Remember how we defined it. Therefore, it's K minus one connected Because now we have a map from the unstable homotopy groups to the stable homotopy groups. And here is our class F. And we know that this is subjective. For uh, now, I'm going to screw up the indexing. Uh, n plus k less or equal than 2k minus 1, I think, of test k, well, test k plus some kind of constant, which is possibly minus 1, possibly 1. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But this is the Freudenthal suspension theorem. Okay, so if I take k large enough, f is in the image. Oh, uh, sorry, pi m plus k tom psi k. So to bind down, I have finally constructed a map of pointed spaces, which I'll still call F, 
factors. Oh. My map like this. So I, I started with a map like this and I, I factored it until I got to this thumb space of this universal bundle for some k, possibly some big k, but we don't care, some finite k. Is this clear? Okay, if there are no questions, I'll go forward because we need a further reduction. Now recall that BOD was the D dimensional Grassmannian in R infinity. And so we can write it as the union over M, uh, the Grassmannian in Rm, or if you want, rather than the union, perhaps we care more about it being the co-limit. Hmm. So now let Psi K comma M be again we take B K times we restrict it further to this Grassmannian. And let me call this for brevity B K comma M. And now the thumb space of Xi k is just the co-limit of the thumb space of Xi k comma m over m. <clears throat> okay, why am I doing this? Well, because now this guy has a nice, nice property. This is a compact, this is a closed, actually smooth manifold. Um, I should have remarked it when we discussed Grassmannians, but I gave you an atlas, some explicit charts around every point. And I should have remarked it that this was actually a smooth atlas. So this is indeed a closed smooth manifold canonically. And it did this, the, the, the closedness is just because uh, to, to get m finite. Uh, because remember, another way of describing this are so where orthogonal projections of rank d. And this is easy to see that it is compact because, yeah. You can just uh, compact because it's closed and lies in, the, I don't know, the norm is greater than some big M. So it is indeed, it's a closed smooth manifold. It's a smooth manifold because I gave you charts back in the day and they were indeed smooth charts, and it's closed because it's, uh, well, it's compact. So now, okay, again, by uh, finiteness, 
of Sm plus K, we can further restrict F to Km for some M. So we have this map. And these in a very complicated way maps into omega infinity, sigma k and psi. And the composition is the map we start with. And these also maps to the tom space of this, where this is the tautological bundle. Grassmannian D planes in Rm. Okay, and that's the key diagram I want to, to consider. Why do I want to consider this? Because this is this thumb space here is almost a smooth manifold. This is the one point compactification of it xi m, which is a smooth manifold. It's a vector bundle over the Grassmannian. And uh, OK, I guess you should check that the pre-images of the charts I gave you for the Grassmannian give you charts on this on this vector bundle but it's easy and moreover eta km contains the grassmannian as a um, embedded closed submanifold as the zero section. So now we want just to deploy our theorems. So this, I can call this P, this F, this is PF, to make sure that PF is transverse to this, to the zero section. This is a bit subtle because the storm space is not a smooth manifold. It is the one-point compactification of a smooth manifold but it is, turns out not to be a big deal. So let me explain how to do that. Okay. Is everyone on board? Okay. Uh, yeah. Just a short question. Um, because maybe I'm a little confused with all the new definitions and indices. So how do you get the last map, map from the tome space of theta km to... Um, oh. Uh, P, P, uh, so yeah, theta Kn is a vector bundle over, over this BKM, which was a pullback. Oh, sorry, no, to the Grassmannian, right? And, and this, by definition, is the, the, the vector bundle obtained, okay, obtained by pullbacks from BOD. Uh, BO, oof. Why am I calling it Grassmannian D? It's Grassmannian K, of course. Sorry. Well, it's defined as the pullback of this vector bundle, right? I, yes, yes. And now I was talking about the horizontal map to omega. Oh, the horizontal map. OK, this was just a huge, huge composite. So let me write it again. You have the, this guy maps inside the tom space of Xi K. 
it, since this is the co-limit of, of these pieces as m goes to infinity, which maps to, well, omega infinity, sigma infinity in the time space of psi k, just by a junction. And these maps to omega infinity, sigma k, and psi. Because remember, recall we had a map. So essentially, the point, the idea is we have this huge, huge space here, and we have a class in the homotopy groups of this huge space. We want to redu reduce and reduce and reduce further until we end up with something which is basically a finite dimensional manifold. Okay, thanks. And this is okay. There, there is the, the small issue that this is not a finite dimensional manifold, but it's not a big deal. It's only one bad point. So we let u to be pf inverse of this piece. This is in s m plus k. In fact, it's inside R m plus k inside S m plus k. And this is an open subset. In particular, it's a smooth manifold. And therefore, up to homotopy, we can assume pf restricted to u from u to eta km is smooth. Now, there is a small issue I am sweeping under the rug here, in that we have to choose the homotopy in such a way that it tends to infinity as the, the point tends to the boundary of u. But you can do that. Uh, because you can always choose the homotopy in such a way that it's a small deformation. So if the point here goes to the boundary, this point goes to the boundary here. So this actually extends to a homotopy of, of the full map on Sn plus k. You just leave it constant the base point on the complement of u. Okay. Oh, good. And now we have these. And so furthermore, we can uh, homotopy further in some, uh, to, to make it transverse to gr, uh, kr to the m. And again, since we can just do the homotopy in a neighborhood of the Grassmannian, this is going to stay to, to extend from up from the full S M plus K. Okay, now that we have this, we can take M and define it as the pre image of the zero section here. And okay, so this is an embedded submanifold of S M plus K of codimension K. because the codimension of the Grassmannian inside the, the vector bundle is exactly k, it's the rank of the vector bundle. Moreover, pf restricted to the normal bundle. So, okay, so let, moreover, let, let nu, the normal bundle, 
of m in s m plus k, then nu Uh, so then, sorry, the, the differential of PF restricted to nu induces an isomorphism with the normal bundle of uh, the Grassmannian inside the vector bundle, but that's just G R K R D into Xi K M. Oh, sorry, eta, eta km, eta km. I'm using eta for the topological bundle on the Grassmann and xi for the bundle on this pullback thing. But then that's... So, nu is classified by some vector bundle. So the normal bundle of m therefore is classified by this map. And I want to claim that the fact, sorry, uh, what they want to say, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, I have this map to the Grassmannian. That's some plus K. So it's inside the SM plus K. I have a community diagram like this. Mapping, uh, well, in a very complicated way, all the way to BO. And here I had B. And now remember, this map had a lift here. This map now is by construction uh, n minus the tangent bundle of n because it's the map classifying the normal bundle. And uh, so I get a lift phi here. just by composing F with this map to SM plus K. And sorry, yeah, I should say R M plus K. Uh, yeah. Because SM plus K, of course, mapped only in the Tom space. So the upshot M phi is a manifold with psi, so that was psi structure. Moreover, if you look at the construction we used, the composite Perhaps some space of new, which is M minus TM map to M psi is exactly our original F. 
I'm sorry, this cannot be our entropy. What do I want to say? Oh, you, 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 that's the point. The open that mapped to, to, to my piece. Sorry. Okay. Questions? This is really not a hard proof, uh, but it might be a bit fiddly if you've never seen it before, um, because you have many, many indices to keep track of it, but essentially they, none of them does really anything. Uh, The proof of subjectivity, unfortunately, it's similar, but more complicated. Um, so let me, what time is it? Yeah, I think I have time to, to explain it. But before I go to the proof of subject, uh, sorry, of injectivity, is the proof of subjectivity clear? So actually, let me review it. So we start with a map like this. The point is that this M psi can be written as a big, big co-limit in the end of this Tom space of Xi K comma M. And that plus the Friedenthal suspension theorem essentially tells you that this map factors through one of those. At which point uh, to get the you have a map to, to this, which is the one point compactification of eta km of a smooth manifold. You want to obtain your manifold by just taking the intersection with the zero section of your map. Now, this in general will produce something horrific. So you have to homotopy stuff a bit until it becomes transverse. And by the way, this is the hard part in the topological case. Um, the rest is, is kind of formal. Uh, and after that is transverse, well, the normal bundle is exactly obtained as a pullback of the normal bundle of the zero section here. And so it has a, it has a phi, uh, size structure because we constructed in such a way that we have given a lift to this Xi Km. In fact, I should have probably defined the U as F inverse of Xi Km. I mean, it's the same thing, of course, but maybe this was made, made it clear that the map from U to, to, to the Grassmannian lifts to this B, BKM. And then, and then it's just a matter of checking that the definition we gave makes sense, but it does. Because we rigged up everything so that it works. Okay. So the proofs for homotopy for, for, for injectivity is basically the same, but for homotopies. So you have a boundary now going on. Okay, everyone ready? We can go. Okay, so we have M phi uh, in the kernel. And we want to show that it is a boundary. So what does it mean in the kernel? It means that this composite map here 
is null homotopic. Okay. Uh, let us be a bit more explicit and make the map in a look more like a map that uh, um, we, we constructed in the subjectivity proof. So choose an embedding of n into r n, n plus k. And now this map is obtained sigma k, sigma infinity, s n plus k mapping. Uh, sorry, new normal bundle. And, and we embed it into our n plus k as some kind of tubular neighborhood. This maps sigma minus k, sigma infinity, ton of new. And this maps to an xi, but we can actually be a bit more precise. And actually, I claim that I can get it. Sorry, for some M. And that's because so where. Uh, Mu is f of a star psi k m for some map m to the k m. And that's because, you know, mu was f of a star of psi for some map from m to b, but b is the colimit over k m b k m. And so we can factor it at some finite level since M is a closed manifold. And so in particular, it's a, uh, uh, it's a finite C-double complex. Actually, for smooth manifolds, it's easy to prove uh, using triangulations, but we don't really need that M is a finite C-double complex, only that uh, it is a retract of one, which is a lot easier to prove. Uh, so. Moreover, we can choose k big enough such that the composite km is null homotopic. That's because if it's in null homotopic in the co-limit, it's null homotopic here for some finite uh, k and m. Uh, and then you use Friedenthal as before, using the injectivity part of Friedenthal now. So again, this is compactness of s m plus k plus Friedenthal. Uh, sorry, what's f here? Is it the map from m to b o? So. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, well, I, I sum map f from m to b k m that that makes our, our composite factor like this. We know that it exists. I mean, we have a map uh, which I called phi from m to b, and so it factors at some finite level, and I call the f. This. this. Factorization. And sorry, and this is the map, the, the tomification of the map F. Which is the identity on every fiber. And this map, just as we're putting in, is the contriagin tone collapse map. That's the identity on new and the base, the everything else to the base point. OK. 
Okay. Okay. Ooh. Sorry, I went a bit quicker here since the argument is exactly the same as before, only with different bounds. But In any case, we, we take some very huge case so that everything works. And so we can extend it. To, to the, um, so we have, again, let me write it. This sits inside dn plus k plus one. And we can extend this map like this, since it's null homotopic. And let me call this H. That's PT, and this is Tom of F. Moreover, without loss of generality, we can ask that H is constant of rays for T greater than minus epsilon x in the boundary. Well, greater or equal even. Not sure if we'll need the equal, but I mean, we can just, you know, it's continuous, so we can thicken it a little bit near the boundary. Hmm. Okay. We're almost there. So now, remark. So, and oh, and remember, we have also this projection map here to eta k m always. Well, I guess I should call it really the tomification of the projection. If I let P be the map from B K M to B O K M. Sorry, not B O K M, I'm calling it the Grassmannian K R M. So okay. Now the idea is as before. Actually, let me put the idea. Make the composite H transverse to the grass to, to the Grassmannian K R M sitting inside the storm space. And uh, uh, the, it's, as before, you need to be a bit careful because this thumb space is not a smooth manifold, although it's very close to one. Uh, and also you need to be a bit careful because you don't want this to screw up the boundary. So the first remark is that if you let A be uh, the pairs, uh, the, the object Tx in, in the disk, such that uh, T is, I don't know, one minus epsilon over two, I don't care, something closer to the boundary and X is in, in some, close in some, uh, uh, well, let's say in the unit disk of new or whatever, in some close neighborhood of the zero section of new, actually, let me say close neighborhood of zero section mm. new, it's not very important. But then H restricted to A, sorry, this guy restricted to A is smooth and transverse to the Grassmannian. Because we have, we know exactly what it is. 
Uh, it's uh, oh yeah. Uh, after homotopying homotopying uh, PF so from M to the Grassmannian. Sorry, forgot this step is smooth. Uh, we can always make, I mean, this is just, this map is defined only up to homotopy anyway. So by the smooth approximation, we can choose that it is smooth. And this, now this is literally just you take new, you project it to the zero section and then you apply this map PF. So this is extremely smooth. So, as before, let U to be a pre image of uh, this psi KM. And note that U intersects uh, X such that the boundary is greater or equal than one minus epsilon is exactly new uh, times one minus epsilon by, by definition of the map. So we can find a homotopy of U relative to U intersect A Such that, uh, sorry, an homotopy of uh, ah, I'm calling it. Can I just call it PH? It's actually Tom B composed with H, but it's well, okay. I guess we should. Be. Such that this map Tom P composed with H uh, becomes smooth on U and transverse to the Grassmannian. As before. And now we have one. Because now you let W be the pre-image of the Grassmannian. This is a neat submanifold of D M plus K plus one. Give boundary exactly uh, M. Since uh, these we know what this map does on the boundary of D M plus K plus one. And as before, there's my KM, this composite phi phi gives a psi structure. On W compatible with the one on M. And that's the end of the proof. So the class of M is indeed a boundary. As you can see, it's exactly the same proof as before. We just need to be a bit careful with the boundary. Questions about this, please. 
I understand seeing it for the first time is a bit overwhelming, especially since I did the full general version that people typically do not do uh, with, a, with a size structure hanging around. And typically, people do either the case when the size structure is the identity or is the map from BSO to O, or sometimes the map from the point to BO. And they don't do the general case. And both of these three cases are easier to, to explain. Typically. Uh, but uh, since I was always confused by uh, how the proof actually works for a general size structure, I wanted to give you the complete proof. So it's not really that hard. Um, the only trick is that you have this guy, BKM, is not a smooth manifold anymore in general. So you have just to work with the transversality here. But that's not a problem. Okay. Questions? So apart from this transversality on the Grassmannian, there are no new ingredients for the general case, right? Just no. some new notation. There are no, no new ingredients, just you know, working very carefully through the definitions. It's yeah. Just... Okay, thanks. Uh, but the transversality is important. As they said in the topological case, it, I mean, it's the only place where we're really using that we have smooth manifolds. Uh, and it is typically what breaks when you try to do generalizations. I mean, it hasn't broken so far. It turns out that all the generalizations are true. Uh, but it, it's always the hard, the, making this transversality argument is always the, the nastier part of the thing. And while for smooth manifolds, it's actually relatively painless. It's essentially based on Sartre's theorem, if you're familiar with it. But of course, for example, in the uh, in the algebraic case, I have no idea how to even attack that for algebraic varieties. Okay, let me first tell you a generalization that I wish I could prove for you, but I, it, it's it's a major theorem. So. We have this guy here. But we can do better. So remember, I define these as a group. But in fact, you can define it as an infinity space. So there exists an infinity category called psi uh, n whose objects are uh, m minus one dimensional closed manifolds and morphisms are bordisms between them. Uh, sorry, with size structure i.e. a morphism from m phi to m prime phi prime is w phi tilde such that the boundary is the difference between these two. This requires some work to define. Uh, it's not that hard actually. Um, but I'm not going to do the technical word. That's not, uh, I'm just going to give you a very sketch of this thing. And this has a symmetric model structure. Given by this joint union of manifolds. I hope at least it is believable, this statement. So a morphism, it looks something like this. This is M, this is M prime, and this is W. And you can take this joint union. Then we can consider the space 
geometricalization of cog and xi, which is the infinity groupoid. obtained by inverting all arrows. If I have a category, I can get a groupoid by inverting all arrows. This is the same true, it also is true for infinity categories. So, pi zero of psi uh, n is exactly omega minus one psi. And now these, since COB was a uh, symmetric model category, this is just an E infinity space. And uh, therefore it's an E infinity group, since we proved that this monoid uh, is a group. And so instead of uh, describing these as the homotopy group of something, we can try to describe these uh, infinity space. And that's the following theorem by Galatius, Madsen, Tillman, Weiss. It's a very important theorem. Says so that this is the one space of a certain Tom spectrum. Where M T Psi is the Tom spectrum of uh, the composite. Yeah, sorry, M T Psi N. N is important. T xi n going from T b n to b o n to b o uh, sorry to to spectra, and this is the one picking up uh, up the o n action on, and I'll be careful, not on the sphere, but on its dual. And the TBN, and I want to call this minus eta n, since it's essentially the opposite of the topological bundle. TBN is just the pullback B, B, O, N, B, O. Um, but this time I need a shift. And this, why am I saying this generalization? This is describing the my O psi n minus one as pi minus one of a certain spectrum, uh, which is different from the spectrum I described before. But if you look at the definition, that turns out that there's an n connected map from sigma n m t psi n to uh, m o uh, so to m psi which is essentially the, the tomification of this vertical map here. So this recovers the Galatius, uh, the, the Pontragin Tom theorem, but gives a much more explicit description. And the, the reason is while the pi minus one of, uh, sorry, the pi zero of this infinity group is interesting, also the higher homotopy groups are interesting. They control uh, the homotopy type of the morphism groups of manifolds. So you can think of these as some kind of categorification instead of identifying this group as some kind of homotopy groups of M xi, you can 
identify the full infinity space of manifolds and cobordism as uh, uh, as uh, a certain spectrum that maps uh, in a highly connected way to M xi. Uh, I got a question. Yes. So this cup category, this cup n uh, theta, it looks to me that already every morphism is invertible. I can no. just stick the opposite trousers. Ah, oh, no, that's, well, that's, uh, that's yeah. You don't get the identity, no. Ah, uh, that's not the identity. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Because, okay, yeah, it's not the trivial connection. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly where the stabilization of the diffeomorphism group by connected sounds show up, but okay. I, I am not an expert of this subject. I just wanted to mention it because it's a very, very important theorem. Uh, it's a relatively recent one. I think the paper is, let me see. Uh, the paper is, uh, it's not that long ago. It's 2010. So. Uh, and this, uh, I mean, this, this builds up previous work over previous work, but uh, uh, it uh, it's a very convenient way of framing a lot of stability results. And also, I should probably mention that there is also a cobordism description of the higher spaces of this spectrum, omega infinity sigma uh, k and psi n, but it's more complicated, and I don't want to state it here. You need to pick higher cohorts and categories, which I don't want to define. Okay, so that was a super modern observation. Let me go instead to the classical thing. I want to discuss why Tom proved this theorem and what he could do with it. Here is the steamroll problem. Is it okay? Okay. So the steroid problem is a very classical problem posed, I don't know, at the very beginning of, of algebraic topology when um, uh, one point carry duality was proven, when the homology groups were proven. And it comes in two flavors, in the oriented and unoriented one. So recall for any smooth and manifold, and there exists a fundamental class in H and M with coefficients in F2. And for every smooth oriented and manifold, um, you can find a canonical integral lift. And I mean, it's traditionally not defined like that, but of course, in this class, we can define it as the composite. Of this, uh, of the fundamental class. Uh, is this composite here, or HF2, if in the unoriented case. So the problem, so let X be a space, and any space, so the, let's do first the unoriented version for which alpha in the mod two cohomology of X, there exists a map where M is a closed, smooth, and manifold such that the push forward of the fundamental class is alpha. That seems a very natural question. And then you can do the oriented variant, which is for which alpha 
integral now there exists a map now m is closed oriented smooth and manifold such that the floor star of m is alpha this is a problem that you could have, I could have stated for you one year ago, perhaps, when you first saw the definition of fundamental class. And it was a problem posed by Steenrod. And uh, the solution of this problem is essentially what moved Tom to, to prove his, his theorem. Is the statement of the theorem clear? Because now our goal is to represent this uh, this problem using more technology. So I claim so. Uh, this is this is equivalent to describing the image of pi star m o tensor sigma infinity uh, x plus and pi star and then the oriented one. Well, MO to HF2 and MSO to HZ are the Tom classes. And moreover, actually, are the well, okay, I'll, I'll remark this later because remember, these groups on the left hand sides are exactly groups of manifolds with a map to X or respectively oriented manifolds with a map to X. So let's see what this map is. So suppose we have a manifold. With a map to X, it's uh, let's say M uh, is N, for example. Uh, then it's class in pi star M O tensor sigma infinity of X plus is the composite. I think I wrote this very very often. Well, actually, I can realize it perhaps more explicitly as this factoring like this, where this is the map we saw last time. It was the Pontryagin tom of m inside m times m. It was called the tom diagonal. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, it's not the Pontryagin tom, it's the induced map by the diagonal. Okay, but now we compose with the Tom class to H of two. And this is equivalent to uh, composing with the Tom class there. Uh, 
that this is exactly. If you recall, this is uh, well, okay, no, sorry, I can. Sorry, and I want to claim that this composite here is exactly the same composite as I defined before to give the fundamental class, the image of the fundamental class. Sorry. And I want to claim that this composite here is exactly the fundamental class. But that's, uh, that follows immediately from the definition of the Tom isomorphism. It is brackets M by the term isomorphism. I mean, in the definition of metal class, I use the term isomorphism. And if you look at uh, how the term isomorphism works, it's exactly doing this. Uh, sorry, I'm a little confused just for the notation. So MO was what we called M psi before, but oh, yeah, psi sorry. the identity, uh, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I said it last time, but let me repeat it. M of the identity of BO and MSO is M of the map from BSO to BO. So let me repeat the notation, yeah. And okay, the same story works for for MSO with the same, exact same diagram. Moreover, note that MO to HF2 and MSO to HZ are isomorphisms on pi naught. That's, uh, that's because the composite maps are Z subjects to F2 and Z goes to Z with the identity. Uh, since uh, by, by definition of Tom class. You want this map to correspond to the unit of this ring here. And so it's, it's what it has to be. Uh, and then it's easy to see. Pi node of MO is F2 uh, because it's the bordism of points. And pi node of MSO is Z, again, bordism of oriented points. Or for MSO, you can actually use it also with isomorphism. Oh, I'm out of time though. So let me just quickly say how you finish the the, the steroid problem, so fact that I'm not going to prove, but that Tom proved, the map MO to HF2 has a section. And so pi star MO tensor sigma infinity X plus to pi star HF2 tensor sigma infinity X plus is always subjective. Okay, this is a bit hard to prove, but the next fact is going even easier to prove. MSO to HZ has a section rationally. 
And that's because every spectrum rationally is a sum of Heidelberg McLean spectra. So this implies a partial solution to the steroid problem. So for every class alpha in H and XZ, there exists an N uh, greater or equal than one and a manifold such that the push forward of M is N times alpha. In fact, a more refined study can show you that N can be chosen odd even but that's not what we proved uh, using the, the fact that mod two can always be realized. So the steroid problem is actually not true. Uh, using similar methods don't show that there are classes that are not in the image of the boardism, uh, but it is true up to integral multiples. And okay, sorry for going over time. I think I want to stop here. Uh, I think that's a cute application, especially since this actually we proved every single step here. We didn't prove this, this section, but this section rationally we proved. Um, and so uh, it, I wouldn't know how to prove this without using Tom Spectre. I don't think anyone knows. But even if it's a very concrete problem about spaces and manifolds, uh, you can see the power of this tool. Okay, I'll stop now. Okay. Uh, I have maybe less of a question, but like a general, uh, general question, general confusion maybe. Uh, so about this last fact, it's clearly important as you say, but for some reason it seems that we've used something very, very advanced technically, and then we reduced everything to rational numbers were kind of, I mean, of yeah. our machinery actually trivializes. So I'm a bit lost about- Well, the, 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 the hard fact that I'm using here is the Pontiagin and Tom theorem here. And where is it? Here, the very beginning. This, this theorem here, the Pontiagin and Tom theorem. And I don't think it would be easier to prove rationally. Of course, the fact that we have these fancy integral statements allow us to do a more refined study. For example, you can construct a whole obstruction theory uh, or you can actually ask, okay, but what if I allow some singularities on my manifold? Mm -hmm. uh, and it turns out that you can, uh, for example, you can realize every class if you uh, allow singularities in codimension at least five, I think. Uh, that's, that also fo will follow relatively easily from the, the, what we did so far. Uh, and then you can ask, okay, but um, what if I don't want to allow singularities in codimension five? What if I allow singularities only in codimension eight? And then you can see that they're using the, the homotopy type of this spectral MSO. You can see there is exactly one obstruction and you can, you can find uh, exactly what conditions you are to, you have on your uh, integral homology classes to, to be realized in, in um, codimension eight. And in fact, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's how Tom proved that there are, the standard problem does not always have an, um, an affirmative answer by showing some class for which this obstruction does not vanish, in fact. Uh, so, in fact, the, the reason why we, it seems like we're using a lot of advanced techniques is that they just did the simplest possible case here, which is basically gets crushed by our machinery. Uh, 
But uh, still, even for this simple case, I do not know of a more elementary proof. I mean, you can phrase it not in terms of spectra, which didn't exist at Tom time, but in, at Tom's time, but in terms of Tom spaces and filter co-limits of homoto stable homotopy groups of Tom spaces. But it's not clear to me that it would obviously be easier. I see. Okay, wait, and you've mentioned this co-dimension five and eight. So this means that in, in low, in low, for a low n, does it have like so the, there is a this, solution? Yeah, there is this cute little fact that the homotopy groups of M psi, uh, sorry, of the Posnikov tower of this guy, uh, sorry, less or equal than M, is Bordism classes of objects with singularities in co-dimension uh, m plus one. I don't want to make it precise what I mean for objects with singularities. If you want a reference, these are called stratifolds, but... Uh, okay. Uh, and so in particular, you can see that integral classes are uh, Bordism classes of objects with arbitrary singularities in co-dimension at least one. Uh, since uh, HZ is exactly the, mm -hmm. the, the zero truncation of MSO. And this is analog, I mean, I'm telling it mainly for you, this is an analog of the fact that uh, multivic cohomology can be realized as some sort of Chow groups, should, where the cycles can have arbitrary singularities. Okay. <laughs> And uh, yeah. That uh, last sentence was highly interesting indeed, but I should digest it, so maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's not a completely, I mean, the, the kind of objects you're working with are very, very different. Uh, the stratifolds do not behave so really like algebraic varieties. So if, analogy is not perfect, but there is a story here. Uh, so uh, Actually, by the way, I discovered this this particular fact like two days ago preparing this class. So uh, it's, it's not like I'm an expert, uh, but I think it's a very cute fact. And this fact I actually, I actually knew already. And the proof is actually not that hard. Once you have this pontragon tom theorem, you have just to set up the definitions of these objects with singularities and you can get these as a corollary essentially. Oh, I see. So somehow you don't even need to perform the proof once again. No, 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 no. You can essentially what you have to show is that the Bordism classes of objects with singularities is a homology theory. Mm -hmm. And of course, it has a map from the homology theory given by M psi because manifolds are in particular have singularity in co-dimension mm -hmm. uh, greater or equal than M plus one. And then you can just check that uh, it's on a level of a level of homotopy groups, it is an ISO in, in, in dimension from n downwards and it's a zero upwards, and you're done. I see. Uh, it's a very cute proof. Uh, I like it. Uh, of course, you have to, to spend some, some work in setting up the theory of this object with singularities instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, or at least believe in in the existence of such. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Let me stop the recording.